Good evening, uh, well, good morning or good day to you, whichever part of the day that you're in, whichever part of the world you are joining us from. Welcome back to ADSR. My name is Paul Nolan, and in the next hour, we are going to go a little bit crazy with MIDI with ADSR's very own Orbit plugin, which is their brand new MIDI plugin that fits beautifully alongside their other amazing products like Hexel and MIDI Grid. And boy, have we got some stuff for you tonight. Um, Orbit is just, as you can tell, I'm a little bit discombobulated by it. It is a sensational tool and we are going to waste no time but to jump into it because there is a hell of a lot to go through. However, before we do that, we want to make you aware of the fact that Orbit is already available. So it came out on the back end of last week and it is available right now for just $19.99. As you can see, £18.71 for you Brits out there who want to pay in GBP. And it comes with a 30-day free trial. And it's a, as you can see, it's a sensational looking plugin. And as the tagline says, next level inspiration. And it is not wrong on any level. So before we really, really jump into it, I just want you to ask if you've been here before, welcome back. I know I always see some amazing, familiar faces in the chat. We'll go through your questions later on. If you have any questions, we'll put some time at the end for that. But if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is ADSR. As I said before, my name is Paul Nolan, and I am a music producer, sound engineer, sound designer, composer, DJ, blah, blah, blah. Anything that makes a loud noise, basically I'm there, especially when it comes to synthesizers and stuff involving MIDI. So if you haven't been here before, or if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Really, really helps us out, helps us make more amazing products like this. And also, if you can give it a like, if you can share, because there's going to be a lot of really good theoretical stuff going on today as well, because it is one of those plugins that just ties everything together. And I can tell you from putting together what we have for this uh, particular live stream and also for a pack of presets that I've built for Orbit, I can tell you something. It is a sensational tool, which you are about to witness. So moving straight in. Here it is. Here's the tool itself. And much like the other tools, if you are familiar with them, if not, we'll go into the whole signal routing. It really is a case of connecting it to any channel that basically can receive MIDI, any sort of synthesizer that can receive MIDI. So that means it can go all the way out to external hardware if necessary. And as you can see, we're also in the brand new Ableton Live 12, which I've been loving so far since it came out officially last week. Did a whole new big live stream for it myself over on our MYT channel, which we'll talk about at the end as well. And ultimately, this is a Euclidean sequencer. So Euclidean sequencers are all about time. That's why it's got this kind of like clock face functionality to it, where it gives you up to eight lanes to be able to fire off different rates and rhythms of MIDI notes obviously different MIDI notes, we can talk about scales, etc., and be able to get into polyrhythms and all sorts of interesting stuff. And it opens out a whole new method of MIDI composition. If you are familiar at all with Eurorack modular gear, again, a lot of Euclidean sequences are built in hardware for Eurorack modular systems or buckler modular systems. And they are some of the most popular effects and MIDI generators out there because of the range of possibilities. And again, think about the things that you can connect a MIDI generator to. We're going to look at it mostly through my lens as a producer of Progressive House, Melodic Techno. However, full-on techno producers, peak drive and hypnotic techno producers really, really love Euclidean sequences because it's got that kind of loopy kind of effect to it. So what we're looking at here is actually, this is my session for the demo track that I actually created for the pack of presets that I've made for Orbit. And we'll go through some of those examples a little bit later on, but I want to go through the basics essentially. So we have the Orbit plugin here, and now we need to connect it to our our plugin here. So again, what I'm using here is Artoria Pigments. Pigments 5 came out recently. And to be completely honest, what I'm using is, well, my own pack of presets. 
uh, that I built for ADSR called ADSR Melodic Techno, which I had an absolute ball putting together. And I know it's been pretty popular on the platform and I'm really, really happy with how these presets came out. So again, it's ADSR sounds. This is what we do. We've got you covered no matter what, whether it's courses, whether it's live streams and education like this, whether it's plugins, whether it's sound packs, we've got you covered no matter what. So essentially what we'll do here is that we'll now connect pigments to orbit and how you do that is through the io section here and then you select the all ins here from midi from so we'll actually accept midi from orbit and then rather than go pre-post effects we'll go straight to orbit and then we need to switch the monitor position to in so it's now monitoring incoming midi so orbit will send midi out of its own channel into pigments now this is incredibly flexible signal routing because what it means for ableton users in particular is that i can set however many plugins i want however many instances of the of pigments for example to be triggered by one instance of orbit and that makes it incredibly powerful for layering midi sounds and you know, we'll get into that as time goes on so what we're going to do is start triggering sounds and again, the, the pack that I've created is what I'm going to use. So essentially, we've got 50 presets here that run the whole gamut from chord passages, chord progressions, arpeggios, lead sounds, even drums. Because again, it's a rhythmical MIDI plugin, which means it makes it particularly interesting for things like drums. So we'll connect it to drum racks. We'll connect it to you know drum samplers, simplers, things like that through the course of the session. So from here, we'll just start with, again, simple, the most simple of all. And as you can see, it's kind of got this, you know, countdown style sort of clock face. You know, for you UK viewers out there that keep expecting it to do the music as the clock's ticking down as people are trying to, you know, make eight letter words with their consonants and their vowels. If you're not from the UK, it's going to make absolutely no sense to you. So just skip that part. So effectively, what I can do now is hit play on Ableton. And we're off. do is we'll put a little pitch plug in on there and then we'll there we go so what we can do is go into an advanced view straight away and this is where it opens the plugin up quite dramatically what we'll do is we'll actually take pigments away here and we'll make orbit front and center and what you can see here is that you get these eight lanes color coded very bright very interesting very engaging on screen and what we can do is pick the amount of steps in the clock face that we have. So they're all set to 16 as this default is. And again, what you can see is that you've got C2 being triggered all the way around, apart from these two elements here, which are being triggered by, as you can see, lane two and lane three, the purple and the blue. So what we can do is decide how many beats there are in the clock. So say, for example, I could put this up to 16 if I wanted to, or how I can do is I can take it down to however many I want, and it will evenly distribute the beats, shall we say, around that clock face. But then once we get into a shape, so say, for example, we go back down to 14, I can rotate that shape around to manipulate the pattern. So again, what I've got here in lane two is that I've got one beat, only the one. And then that is set there down at six o'clock. But again, it's been rotated by a factor of eight steps. So again, it gets it down to that six o'clock kind of area, basically. Then obviously we've got the number one here, a uh, beat on number three with no rotation at all. And again, we can just re-rotate things back. So again, what you'll ha what will happen here, if it was in this position, you can see there's actually two notes occurring at once. Well, they'll both play at once if it's a polyphonic patch in the synth, which it is here. So it will play chords if you position them that way, and you'll see that a little bit later on. Other aspects that you've got for editing is that you can add a probability percentage. So this is the chance. So let's say, for example, if we play that again, and actually just have it, you know, where we were before. 
four, like so. But then we change the chance to say 75%. That means any one of the beats has a 70% chance of triggering, which adds this element of randomness into, into play. You've also got the ability to change the velocity of the particular lane so all the beats in that lane will adhere to that particular velocity and each individual lane has its own swing as well which means you can get in some really interesting syncopations that also as we hit the swing is graphically represented so you can kind of see it turn around the clock face and you can kind of go to almost like a half position there you can also manipulate quite nicely note lengths as well what it gets really interesting with the Euclidean sequences is that each individual lane can have its own clock. So at the moment, it's actually working in a eighth note kind of situation. So there's 16 beats, but it's playing at eighth notes. So one of the things I'm just going to do is I'm going to add a little uh, kickstart here, a little bit of side chaining, just to kind of make that nice and interesting. And that'll just make it work with a kick drum that I've got working here. You can hear that stop and you can hear that stop basically that's happening every now and then because there's a 75 percent chance of triggering so that's quite interesting so again what we could also do is change the note length like we mentioned before so we'll focus in on number one here and you can hear that slightly clipped and then the longer note length there. And what's really cool is, is if we come out of the advanced view, one of the things we can also do is modulate. So there's a full modulation system. We're now looking at lane one in focus for the parameters. So each one of these parameters, as you can see here, actually can be modulated. So you can change things like the steps, the amount of steps, over a point of 16 beats shall we say we could run that all the way up to 32 again that would run two rotations of the clock essentially so we could try that with note length where we can again individually this is where it gets into polyrhythms and interesting elements very similar in a lot of ways actually to the sequencer within Artoria Pigments, which is something we've seen before with the new enhancements in Pigments 5. If you haven't seen our live stream on that, again, another reason to subscribe to the channel and go back and have a look at that because we had an absolute ball with that recently. But again, what I can do is I can start from a very small note length and then just run it through like so. And I can have it just be very, very clipped. So you get that movement of the note length through there, which is really, really quite nice. The other thing that's quite interesting, which we'll play with a little bit later on, is that you can actually have certain steps play chords as well. So this is not just about single notes. So again, as you can see, we're going quite deep very, very quickly here. And again, there's other tools that we're about to kind of talk about here. So again, we've got this and it's in nominally c2 c3 and then there's a g there as well so there's a number of different musical scales that could adhere to but the good news is is that say for example if i wanted it to adhere to say for example that would absolutely fit within a c major scale i can pop that in there and again it does like a little inversion here with the root note at c so effectively it will change how that sounds now And we can change that while the scale is actually on, or we can change it to a Dorian scale. Phrygian. Very nice indeed. So this very basic 
kind of fundamental way of it working is, is quite cool. And again, you can see it working through. You can see the three white lines doing kind of the countdown, shall we say. And that will get more elaborate as time goes on as we start to build on the basic knowledge of it. Because again, by first sight, Euclidean sequences can be quite daunting and they can be quite kind of uh, intimidating, shall we say. But again, breaking it down like this just gives us more ability to understand. And again, once you kind of get into it, what I found is the further down the rabbit hole I went with this plugin, the better it got. I got more into the parameters of, right, how do I get this to sit in a sweet spot for what I'm trying to achieve? And it just comes to life and it brings creative possibilities that you know, you may not have ever considered otherwise, which is what makes it a really powerful tool. Like all of ADSR's tools, like MIDI Grid, which you will have seen me on on other live streams, like Hexel, like these have become three of the primary MIDI composition elements that I've used in recent times to get some amazing riffs. And we'll go into those shortly. The great thing as well is like now we're here and let's say, for example, this is the the pattern that I really, really like and the scale that I'm into, what I can do is I can click these three bars here or these three notes or these three dots, I should say. That'll open a menu on an export length and I can have that at, say, for example, eight bars. I can then take this target icon and, yep, you've guessed it, I can drag and drop it onto my channel of choice here, this pigment. And if I double click and if I fold it up here, that is literally what it's doing. So that gives you the MIDI of what the Euclidean sequencer is spitting out, which is absolutely wild because now you've got the ability to use all the MIDI editing tools that whatever version of Ableton you're on, but you've also got the new editing features within Live 12. So again, you've got this ability to do MIDI generating, adding intervals, all of this type of thing. And you know, one thing I've got to point out here is one of the new MIDI generators in Max for Live is actually a, Luke, a Euclidean sequencer. However, whilst this is useful in terms of where it's at within the DAW, I have to say that Orbit is much more user-friendly for me and has provided much more inspiration. So again, if you are a new Live 12 user, again, I'm absolutely loving it. This would actually be a perfect, I would say, an almost upgrade from what you get from the Euclidean sequencer. And for the one to $19.99 until April the 1st, personally, I think, I think you've already seen enough to understand it's a no-brainer. And we've just got started, shall we say. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to free this instance of Orbit up and have it play its own MIDI here on the Pigments channel, I can switch to Auto. I could even switch off. I can even put that back to all ins. And again, if I hit play, there you go. There we go. So the MIDI is there. And again, that's now fully editable. I can return that back to orbit like so. And then one of the things we can start to look at now is to really go deep in terms of add in to this, being able to bring an element of randomness and a little bit of inspiration to this particular sound. So again, what we can do is we can go to a randomizer. So this randomizer is very powerful because all of the major parts of the Orbit plugin system, shall we say, across all of these eight lanes are actually randomizable. And this is where you need to learn some parameters because it will do some wild stuff. So say, for example, if I, you know, hit that on the random, I hit randomize all, th this could potentially come out with just gobbledygook. And again, I'll just put that back on monitor. As you can hear, pretty wild, like what it's just done. In fact, there's one thing I want to do to this pigment sound. I just want to back off just a little bit on my distortion here. But what's quite interesting here is that you can kind of hear the the bones of something. So this, this is where you go into some of the other aspects of what Orbit can do. So let's say, for example, you can see here the steps are all over the place. Some things have 23 steps. Some of them have, you know, 15 steps, 12 steps, odd and even numbers. 
across the board. And again, it really gets into things like polyrhythms, shall we say. However, if I hover over each step here, I get a number of additional options. I get the ability to solo the particular lane. Okay, so I can just listen to that on its own now. And what's quite interesting, you can hear the pattern changing. And you've got that chance as well. Skips. So we could find something that complements that. So let's say, for example, we can see whether or not we want to add something here. This one has four. Number three. So let's see what that does and whether it's... And again, you can see it's an eighth triplet grid. So what we could actually do is change that a little bit and bring some order out of the chaos, shall we say. see the two rates working together and then sometimes you'll get a coincidence you'll get two notes at once things like that so it can be quite interesting where you get odd numbered or strange steps that you know add into sort of more of a polyrhythm and again you could actually reduce the steps quite a bit down so you could do things like say for example if we were to take that off so like you'll get like something based on a sixth note down a little bit there you go and again if I was to do things like you know seven It's already even just changing. That's quite interesting. So again, we can start to play around with that. Let's say, for example, we pick another one with 16. We can... There we go. And off a completely random set of stuff that it's just come up with, we've almost kind of got almost like a bass and a kind of a counter synth off the top of it. So again, we can carry on here. We can actually look at some really interesting stuff where let's say, for example, we go back to another one here that's got six. We might want to just take this as the actual swing down a little bit. Uh, it's got four beats. You might want to bring that back down to a 16 and then rotate it. So we get an interval and you can see there's actually no other layers, shall we say. There's no other notes there. So essentially, we'll get that as a nice kind of coincidence. Again, this is in a, a, a quarter triplet, which is like an eighth dotted note. Essentially, it's an eighth note with the 16th on top. So that will give you sort of more of a triplet-y vibe, and we'll get into those later on. So we can change that, and I might just change that to, again, something like, you know, a bit of like a, a, you know, a 16th note. <laughs> We're already, we're off, we're off to the races. We're actually doing some pretty wild composition. And again, we can take that and we can drop it in and there you go. So it'll give you the notes of the active lanes, essentially. So it'll, it won't, you know, again, because there's all sorts of other stuff here in the lanes that are, you know, not soloed here. So actually it's, it's very, very useful for this type of thing. Uh, to be able to get that kind of element. So again, if I completely fold that down, you can see those three notes there, E1, E3, and then A3. So it's actually like, you know, quite a simple thing that you could actually come up with in the piano roll. But again, it's much more inspiring to play with it this way. 
And again, you've got so many other options. So again, what you've also got here is if we wanted to, let's say, for example, bring up number three again, what we could also do is that we can randomize pair lane, which is pretty wild because then you've got the ability to see whether or not we can counter that again. see whether or not I can get a little bit of a rotation where there's actually no other notes which might be a little bit tough with the other aspect happening it's looking a bit crazy that or maybe we can kind of thin things out <laughs> It's on a it's on a, a quarter sorry a quarter yeah triplet. And it could work if we. So it's more ideas, basically. More ideas on top of more ideas. Now, let's say, for example, I don't particularly like that. What I can do is I can hit the delete there. That'll take it all the way back to its kind of root settings. And let's say, for example, I want to take a variation here of this particular lane. So what I can do is I can hit copy here, hit that copy button, paste it. And again, I can take the values from lane five into lane three and essentially now tweak, essentially, from there. So I could change the note, obviously, to get a different interval. I could change the clock. I can do anything I want. So again, I can delete that out. And if I'm happy and I want to save this, all I can do is hit the disk icon here. I can save it into whatever I want here. So very simple, but massive ramifications here. So again, what I, I want to do here is kind of explore some of the examples that we have that i've created for this particular pack and you know it, it is very very sort of interesting some of the stuff that we can do here so what i'm going to do is just kind of go through some of the presets here and then we'll go through some of the examples so the examples here which i've got in the arrangement view as well here i have everything kind of blanked out here because we will kind of get into these elements a little bit later on but every single one of these is created with orbit essentially apart from some of the drum stuff which is audio uh, but in the vast majority of cases the the midi and the melodic stuff that you'll hear is created with orbit itself okay so let's say for example we kind of cycle through some of the other presets maybe we change for another preset here we go back to my old bank here the melodic techno bank and one of the other sends that i really like one of the other presets that i really really liked was was it chugger yeah so it's an arp but i can turn the sequencer off so what we'll do is is actually kind of go back to there and we'll go through some of these and you can see these really interesting patterns that start So super simple stuff. I can obviously tweak that. I could maybe take the whole thing to 16th. Very useful. And again, I can always change the scale on this as well. find complementary keys so you can do key changes progressions the whole nine yards 
So again, these kind of like spiral shapes are you know, familiar because they are like really nice arpeggios essentially. So again, that's a form of arpeggio. This is a more pitched one. Each individual lane has its own note value essentially. And again, we'll get stuff like this Detroit one, which actually has like a chord on the end of it. Which, if I was playing one with, uh, <laughs> which is not uh, monophonic, you would have heard that chord actually. Um, let me just see. So duh, 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 duh. that one, that one had a chord on the end of it. Anyway, we 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 move on. We move forward. Uh, so momentum. Here we go. It's a good driving element there. And if we were to go back to this particular sound here, go back to panel beta that we were using before. So it's got the ARP and it's got the counter melody built in. something a bit more slow and a bit more melodic as you can see you've got four beats here so you've got four rotations and you've got up to 32 steps here so you've got 32 steps in total across the clock face shall we say and again like the whole thing is, is working quite stably here so say for example if i did want to randomize from here one thing i do want to cover is how to kind of like rein the madness in a little bit so say, for example, if we do quite like the basis of what we've got here, I just want to try something a little bit different. Say, for example, when it comes to things like notes, right? What I would actually do here is that I wouldn't randomize the steps and I wouldn't randomize the beats. So I can take those and make them inactive within the, the randomization. And I may even just leave the rotation as well. So that effectively locks the initial shape we can do that with the clock as well so we can take that out of action what we can do is randomize the velocity we can randomize the swing but i might just keep that to a, a minimum as well so i might take that off again we can change the chance from 75 maybe that would be quite cool and we can change the note length but what we can do is also activate the note which means effectively here it is an octave so we've got between 0 and 12 note choices. And what that's going to do is randomize each individual step, each individual lane, I should say, by essentially an octave, up or down. Now, again, if I hit randomize here, what you'll see is some changes. The shape won't change, but the actual sound of the sequence will. And we stay on those parameters. got the scale mode on so if i was to turn that off you'll see it shifts quite a bit because again it puts notes back in their original position shall we say rather than into the scale so it's forcing this scale awareness which again is another big feature this couldn't come at a better time for live 12 because you have all of this scale awareness stuff going on as well so you can hear it's kind of slightly off but it's got a kind of a nice techno kind of vibe to it of sinister really so again i've made an iteration on a pre-existing preset i can then save so again think about the presets that you get you get 80 with the actual plugin itself and this pack again is is, is extra and you basically get, you can use these as jumping off points for your own inspiration so again like adding in that element of controlled randomization a little bit of controlled chaos really works quite well so again, 
something a bit more progressive. the races then and then again yes we want to take that all right great we can put that we'll drop that in thank you very much let's find a slightly different key essentially so we could change we can keep that in its scale which is a minor scale it's kind of in a minor with a root note of d so let's change that up to a and see what happens we get that higher octave we can go to a2 or A1. And again, change the preset. Like I have, you can lose entire weekends to this stuff. Because I can just sit here doing this <laughs> the whole time. You know, it's kind of apt that it goes around in circles because I'm going down that spiral, that rabbit hole of what this can do. And again, we've only just gone through the ARPs. So again, some of the other presets that we've got, which are really, really cool, is we've got the ability to obviously use things like the lead sounds. <laughs> Subtle. There we go. And yes, the classic brumps that you get in modern melodic techno, very afterlife. So you can do that kind of like triplety thing. Again, you can see the clocks go up to 30 second notes are very, very simple where that's concerned. You get these nice little kind of half call and response type leads, riffs. And again, it's insane to think like what you can get out of like one preset here, you know, as we just roll through the presets. Again, a simpler one, just sets things up quite nicely. So you can really write very full sound and very musically quite advanced riffs with this thing once you kind of get into the understanding of it and again a lot of the times for me it's starting from a randomized place or from an existing preset that i can kind of build upon and again that's helping me to get to very very interesting riffs melodic stuff etc which is what we've explored up to now what we haven't explored is the fact that we can also experiment with this with drums so i've got a drum rack here with just some basic sounds in that i used for the demo track and i'm going to take pigments off here but then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add orbit to the drum rack 
And again, we're going to use some of the really interesting drum stuff that we've got going on there. So again, I've programmed it to work with a drum rack essentially. So C sharp, C one, etc. So if I was to actually like play this now, what you'll hear if I take that shaker off, this is now Orbit triggering the drum rack. There you go. There's your kick and clap done. Very nice. And again, what I can also do is add in, let's say, for example, there's four steps there. Let's say four. And I want to put that on. Take those. And you can do drum grooves with it as well. Add a bit of swing. You can go all the way up to 16th and then. Change the velocity. You can do all of that. Really interesting. And again, and once I'm happy with that very basic pattern, I can even drop that in. There you go. Boom. Right. There's my 16 hi hats done. Boom. Thank you very much. Really, really interesting. So again, what you'll be able to do here with the drums is that there's like basic grooves, there's stuff with like 16 shuffles, as you can hear. Some breakbeat stuff. Some interesting kind of polyrhythm called hi-hat stuff, which you can build around in another groove. And this one's really interesting because this is actually to do with like your 808 Tom, which I've got here. So we can kind of take this off. Again, another drum example here. We can add that in like so. And again, if I play that with the... That's your kind of low Tom groove there. One working at one rate, one at another, with different steps. A little evolution of that. Groovy sort of tom-based bass line. And again, want to see what that looks like? There you go happy days so it's not just a melodic tool or an arp tool or something to kind of write riffs with it's something and again like in euro rack world in hardware world where you do get you know hardware euclidean sequences as part of those euro rack sort of you know makeups and and kind of you know builds that people spend thousands on a lot of the time the euclidean stuff is actually made and used with drums because it just comes up with interesting polyrhythms like you've just seen so we've got a bit of time before we do sorts of questions and stuff like that. And what I'm going to do is we're going to flip over now. We're going to flip over into the arrange view. And what you'll see here are various you know examples from the demo tracks. And I'm just going to make sure everything's on there. And then we're going to go back to arrangement. And then we're all good. So... What we're going to do, um, we're going to open all of these out. There we go. Thank you very much. And open everything. Thank you. Okay, that's good. You can see, still finding me way around Live 12. Still a little foibles that I'm getting used to. So what we'll do is we'll just listen to, like, say, for example, this second one to start off with. And again, this is like multiple instances of pigments. And again, just basic drums. So we'll go through each one. <laughs> Doing the old in out in out there. Do that. Thank you very much. Back to all in. So 
again, there's the MIDI there. Again, all done with all of it. And again, I've done two layers of this kind of nice sort of squarey sort of bass. And it's the same thing, it's just an octave apart. And again, that's the basic kind of like simple kind of arp from Orbit, which is really, really cool. Again, I did the demo track, did this this morning, and it just sounded great. So I wanted to kind of use it as examples in the stream here. another basic element with something a bit more melodic over the top. Like start going a bit more in depth on the composition when you get to here because we can actually put in like a sub bass there and there are some just to finish up here there are some presets that are you know, absolutely, like, in that triplety, because, again, with that whole afterlife sound, you do a lot of the time get that, like, you get that triplet kind of vibe. So there are some presets in the pack as well, like this. There you go. Very almost like, you know, like, Oxia sort of domino. So yeah, you've got all of these different kinds of elements. I mean, we've we've listened to most of them. Let's listen to this first one. And again, you can see here, this is where the low tom comes into it. Again, created with Orbit, exported to MIDI, saved as a preset, very, very handy. And actually, the secret here is that the same tom groove, as you can see, it's the same MIDI, it's just triggering the synth. So a lot of the time when you're doing things like this, like tom grooves and bass lines and stuff, you can just apply them to other synths. So that's quite an interesting element. And again, here you just get a nice driving element. That's that simple preset we looked at right at the beginning. So yeah, I mean, as you can see, we've had a lot of fun with Orbit in with Orbit in the in the last kind of couple of weeks that, you know, over here I've been able to kind of play around with it. It's been very, very, very cool indeed. So again, like there's just uh, an, an absolute plethora of possibilities here that you can kind of dig into. And we've kind of covered all the main pieces. Hopefully we've kind of demystified the elements of euclidean sequences because again you can be presented with stuff like this on the screen and it's like oh god this is a bit crazy and there are some videos online like i was watching videos over the last few days and they get into like you know divisors and prime numbers and stuff like that and the great thing about orbit is is that if you've got knowledge of that great you can apply it but if you don't then it's not a problem you can actually you know decide how and when you deploy this at your musical leisure and i've got to say i think this is probably the ultimate tool for those who are creatively blocked because 
if you're adding in this element of randomness into proceedings it just makes total sense that if you're not feeling creatively that alive or the ideas aren't coming or you go through those periods like I've just done for a long while where it's like I just don't feel like anything I'm making is any good and it's not quite hitting the mark for me this has come out in the process of me composing with this has come out with about eight or nine things where I'm like oh Christ I could actually make a track out of that you know so it, it is absolutely sensational and just such a great compliment to all of the midi tools that adsr have like hexel and midi grid and if you haven't checked those out before please do because they are sensational and again it's fantastic to be you know working with a company like adsr who've got fantastic in-house plugins again the other one that i haven't mentioned is their own drum machine which i've done plenty of streams on which is brilliant as well so again the in-house under the hood plugins of adsr if you will are actually some of the best in their categories within the industry and that's a fantastic thing to say and the great thing is they're all very cost effective again orbit's just 20 dollars until first of april so it's absolutely worth your while signing up if you haven't already with adsr and investing in this because for me i think it's a no-brainer it works in every daw i just happen to be using ableton here but it will work in logic cubase whatever it is that you want to work with it works across the board any synth that can receive midi again you could set this up and hook it up to an external instrument plugin and have the midi sent out to whatever hardware that you might own as well so if you've got stuff like you know Beringer stuff like the model d or you know a korg mini log or you know even something a bit more like large format than that like you know uh i don't know uh, uh a sub 37 or any of the other really you know, big hardware since like, you know, um, or poly brutes, you know, stuff like that. This will work with all of it. So again, it's just a fantastic MIDI generating tool. So yeah, amazing stuff. So let's, because we've got a few minutes left now, we can go and check the old comments here. So I'm just going to slide Ableton to one side. We can have another little look at the the whole page here and again you can just go to adsrsounds.com forward slash orbit you'll get taken straight there 30 day free trial but again your sale price 20 dollars runs until april the first wonderful stuff okay hello to ambient noughts looks fun yeah izzy wizzy we got busy do you like to see what i did there i'm a sucker for any midi generator uh jake loves awesome bud thank you <laughs> Clockwork Orange, very nice, Sean, very nice. Hello to Chris Rodborn, hello, sir. Uh, how many instances can run simultaneously, asks Laura. As many as you want, as many as you want. Just because I'm running one with a, you know, multitude of different plugins, you could actually just run that one-to-one -one where you could have one instance of Orbit to whatever synth that you're working with. So very, very easy, very, very easy. So amazing stuff. Um... Abraham Clark, what trouble are you getting into? I'm always getting into trouble, mate. You know that. Martin McFly, I buy it. There's a joke in there somewhere about almanacs and going back to 1955, but we won't go there. Hello, Sean, NYT peeps, definitely. Yeah, we'll give them a shout out towards the end. Dragon Dreams, hello, looking forward to finding out what, what I can do with it. Hopefully, we answered your questions on that. TI80 Mark, absolute pleasure to see you as per usual dear 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 boy and uh yeah ambient notes is there bertie f hello freunder hello bertie and uh yeah looks exciting so far yeah amazing stuff dragon dream said he bought the plugin a couple of days ago loving it uh just bought how is the free piano vst not sure which one you're talking about there but the, there's plenty of good piano vsts out there i could i could recommend a few to you but yeah amazing yeah definitely yeah uh spaces says yes i'm gonna get this for sure and that's the great thing like every time i've played around with this and i've kind of like spoken to someone about it and gone hmm, look at this. every single person goes oh i'm buying that like i'm I'm buying it it's insane so again it's a complete no-brainer at this kind of price and you know who couldn't do as was said in the comments with more lovely random midi generation or you know slightly less random you heard me do some quite melodic stuff with it there so yeah absolutely sensational really really love this plugin yet another hit for adsr and yeah it's a pleasure to kind of go through these things with you all right now so looks like there's no sort of burning questions which you know maybe suggests that 
I have hopefully adequately explained it all to everyone on this stream. It's always fun to be here at ADSR. It's my home away from home when it comes to live streaming. And again, if you want more of this type of stuff, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please do give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us with that, you know, the overlord, which is the algorithm. And, you know, it helps us reach more people, helps us make more plugins like this, helps do more offers and sales and everything else. So, yeah, please do. And also share this with your friends, with your other producer friends. You know, ADSR has got a great Discord community as well. And, well, quite frankly, so do I. So I also, in my sort of other life, I have an artist development platform called MYT. And we have a record label that's doing incredibly well. Uh, we're a top 10 beat port label at the moment overall. And we help artists become the very best that they can be. So if you're interested in that, give me a follow on uh, social media at Paul Nolan Sound. And we are at Make You Are Transition over on Instagram, Make You Transition over on TikTok that kind of stuff and we are an amazing and very proud partner of ADSR the two of us work well together like a hand in a glove as you've probably just seen over the last hour so it's been fantastic working with Steve and the team over the last uh, year and a half or so and long may it continue so we're here to help no matter what we're here to help you with your music career. We're here to help you with amazing new plugins. We're here to help you make better music. We're here to help you become the artist that you know you can be by hopefully becoming the best version of yourself as well. So yeah, this has been an absolute pleasure. Always love showing off incredible tools on this channel and we will have more for you, no doubt, in the very near future. So that will be it for now. Look after yourselves no matter what you're doing and whether or not you're going to spend the rest of your day playing with Orbit. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll have a lovely rest of your day no matter where you find yourself in the world, no matter what time zone you are in. And that is me for now. I've been Paul Nolan. You've been absolutely lovely. And I shall see you guys very soon. Much love.